Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, and this is episode 89. It is a Sunday night. Um, beautiful, beautiful uh, evening out here. Um, nice breeze. You can hear the, the bushes, and just the weather's perfect. I could sleep out here. Um, today, we pretty much picked up from yesterday uh, as far as uh, the yard work um also uh have an issue with my ac uh but i'm not i don't want my ac guy here so i'm gonna deal with it i have w- our window units that i keep as an emergency um anyone who has a home i i suggest um to have something like this you never know when that thing goes out uh mine is fine it it, it, it cools but it seems like the, the blower is working, like overworking. It just, I could put, I could feel the cool air, but I have very high ceilings and there's certain spots in my house that I can put my hand up and I can feel it and I'm not feeling it. Other rooms I am, I check the vents are not closed because they're too high up. Um, but I, I really don't want to call my guy right now in here. I really don't want anybody over here. Uh, so we pull out the, the window units. We keep them in the windows anyway. We get, we got one in the living room, one in our bedroom. Um, and we usually keep one in Erica's room. Um, and then I have like three or four other ones in my storage unit from when we had the other house. We used to uh, put them in the windows when we used to rent the, the houses out. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so those things. Oh, yeah, so what I did is I, for some reason, the one in the living room, because my windows in the living room are pretty low. So um, I took it out the window. Uh, what happened was I plugged it in. I just heard a hum. So I knew it was clogged up. And sure enough, when I opened that thing, oh, my God. Leaves, spider, spider webs. Um, looks like those cocoons or, you know, when they take the webs and they turn them like, turn them into like a ball almost, like a ton of those. And uh, I could see why that thing wasn't, wasn't, uh, wasn't turning. So I took it apart. And hosed it down. Santana actually helped me. I, I show her a lot of that stuff. I, I, I show her how to open up the, the sleeve. I used to do that for a living back in the days. So it was so funny. It was so funny because I worked for a guy named... Uh, I totally forgot about this dude. I, <laughs> I worked with a guy named Gerson Steinbach. Okay, so I had to be probably 18 years old. Maybe 19. And... He was a little short Jewish guy, okay? He lived in like a little bit of a ritzy Jewish part of Jackson Heights, Queens. And like those those um, buildings were all like co-ops and um, they, were, they were different than the rest of the neighborhood, you know? You went up there, if you weren't in that neighborhood, if you weren't from that neighborhood, the cops usually slow down and see, what are you doing over here? So it was pretty, pretty well protected. But anyway, so there was a guy named Gerson Steinbach, okay? He used to do, Air conditioners and televisions. No, not air conditions and refrigeration. Even though he's done refrigeration before, um, but there was a reason why he didn't like to do them. So he did air conditioners and he did, um, I think he said something that he recommends that when a refrigerator goes down that they just get a new one because that refrigerators don't normally go down. When they do, it's just time for a new one. No sense in trying to repair a refrigerator. However, ACs are a little different. Um, there's a lot of, you know, turning them on, turning them off, and, and there's ways, and they, since they have a fan and stuff inside that they, uh, they get clogged, whatever the case may be, so those things damage. So he does televisions, he did televisions, and he did, um, um, ACs, you know? So now what he used to do, he was smart, okay? He didn't pay us a lot of money, I think we got paid like $60 for the night, he would pick us up, and we usually did our work in the evening, and then... Um, 
during the week, um, it was like, no, I said during the week he used to pick us up. I, I remember us having to go out maybe around five o'clock, something like that. And then we worked till like 10 o'clock. And that I remember. And then I remember on the weekends, he would sometimes pick us up early. And it was just like one guy at a time. So I forgot who was the first one to work for him. I think it was a friend of mine named Cano. I think he was the first one to work for him. And then he couldn't always work or he didn't always want to work. So what Gerson used to like to do, he used to like to get the thugs from the neighborhood. Anyone who he knew can walk down, walk through certain neighborhoods and aren't going to have an issue. Because he had to go to a lot of neighborhoods that really wasn't a good spot for a little... This dude must have been like four... Like He was definitely under five feet. He was like maybe 4'10". And I remember because, oh my God, um, he used to wear his blue uniform. And just a short... He was a character, man. He had the, the glasses, no mustache. He had the hair around his ears, white hair. And uh, he was a funny dude. He was a funny dude. And um, and I remember his food, his car always smelled like food because like he wouldn't eat out. He would um, always like bring food with him. And it was all, you know, Jewish food, man. So they ate whatever it is they ate. I don't know what they ate. So so the, the car always smelled like it was a little small car. And then I remember the dude used to fart in the car all the time, too. So it was like, it was kind of a disgusting ride. But you went into his house where his wife was, and it was immaculate. Like, it was a beautiful, it was a big apartment. He actually lived in the apartments where one of those condos where he used to serve it. So it was really, really nice. So his wife kept that because he was kind of slobby, his car. But his car was like a working car. And it wasn't, that was what was crazy. I thought the car, his car was too small to be doing what he did. And what he did is he had, like, he would put blankets in the back seat. And we had to pick up either the TVs or the air conditioners and put them in the back seat. Now, now remind you, it's not these flat screens we got now. Now, if you guys don't remember, I'm 53. So if you guys are, you know, I guess anywhere. Well, I mean, it really wasn't that long ago. These TVs weighed a ton. And they were very hard to carry. And I had to carry them. He didn't have, I don't remember. I, he had a hand truck that we used to have to get like for certain things. But most of the time, I had to carry it. And I remember he showed me how to carry a TV. And you would basically carry it with the screen to your chest. And then you would hold it. And then the, you know, the back stuck out a lot. So now... Then when you had to get it into his back seat, sometimes that back piece that stuck out wouldn't let you get it into the seat right. And you had to kind of keep messing with it until finally you got it in. And oh my God, I remember that. The same thing with the ACs. I remember the ACs were heavy. Now remember, the, ace, ace, the ACs were always heavy on one side. And it was so funny because I remember when you, we used to take the, the ACs out together, he used to always give me the side with the compressor. That was the heavy side. I never caught it. Hey, come over here. Come on this side. So I guess that's what he paid me for. Um, and and um, so we used to go and um, we used to have to bring him and then we used to um, put him in the back seat. And then we used to bring him. He had a shop. I guess that he rented in the basement of, I guess it was his building. I don't even remember. You know, I'm thinking about it now. This is so, remember, I was 18. I never really talked about this before, but it was a pretty important time in my life because I think it was like the first job I had. And I remember, I, I, I think the, sh the shop, it was in a building, it was in a basement, it was like a room in a basement. It might not have been his basement. It might have been another one that he rented out from like a super or something. They, you know, the supers, they didn't care. They, they make a couple extra dollars and, you know, rent you a little room. I remember we went in there. It was this, you know, just a basement with, you know, some um, workbenches and we would put the TVs up there. But I never worked with him on the TVs in the shop. That's what he would do. Now, what I did work with him on and what I did learn was... Um, working on them in the house and we would do and we would have to put down a drop cloth and pull the ACs in and a lot of times he would he would loosen them uh, and I remember because a lot of times 
the sleeve would stay in the window. He would just pull the unit out and you could see all the guts. So you could see the coils and the, and the compressors and everything and he would clean them out or do whatever he had to do or change out the fan or what, you know, and I remember this. Now I didn't do too much of that. I remember I had to, he would give me screws to take off and screws to put in. I don't remember having a drill screw drum gun. I only remember doing it by hand. Um, and then the same thing with um, the televisions. Now, mind you, they were not, forget about even the type of television. There was no cable. Like, I don't remember working on cable. I don't remember anybody having cable. It was always the regular TV in, in New York. I don't know about anywhere else. So we had channels 2, 4, 5, 7, 9, 11, and 13, which was like Sesame Street at PBS. So those were the channels that we had, you know? And <clears throat> if you had, if you lived in an area that has sucky reception, you maybe got three channels, you know? You were very rare that you got all the channels. And when you did get a certain channel, it had the rabbit ear uh, antennas, if you guys don't remember what that was. Those were the two uh, wires, the two antennas, like, like the antenna on your car, well, some cars. Um, and they were like rabbit ears, so there was like two of them, and then there was a unit in the middle, you used to turn the unit, ba 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 ba, and they used to help the reception, and it was so funny, and then you would change, you would, you would adjust the antennas until you finally got a good picture. When you got a good picture, you got a good picture. Like, it was really, really clear. But then, of course, you know, you'll be watching TV, and then we'll get messed up. And someone would have to go up there and adjust the antenna again. And, like, you felt like an expert if you was able to go there and adjust your antenna the right way and get the perfect the perfect picture, you know. But I remember having to go. And I remember one of the things he used to do. Then when I had a, my house, like, we had regular channel TV, like a dial. So, like, it was just a dial. It was just, you grabbed it, almost like on a washing machine, an old washing machine. So, and you would just turn it to knob. And it went, you know, pa pa pa. So it was in clock, you know, in clockwise. So it went, you know, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you know, and what my mother used to tell me to do, like if I want, if I was on channel two and I want to go channel five, like I wasn't allowed to go, you know, real fast. She used to yell at me, "Don't do it so damn fast, damn it, you're gonna break it." However, that's how Gerson used to fix them. He used to spray like a WD-40 or something inside them. Uh, or the air, I think he had the air. No, we didn't, I don't think we had air, air cans of air. I think it was the WD-40, yeah. And then he used to take those things and he used to just turn that thing like, just keep turning it real fast. I, I remember when he first did that in front of me and I was like, whoa, you gonna break it. He goes, no, no, it won't break. He goes, this is how I, I clean it. This is how I make sure, and he used to fix it. And he was actually, he was really good at what he did. And, and but, um, but anyway, one of the funniest things, I, I wanted to explain a couple of funny things. I, 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 they're just hitting me right now. But <laughs> we, used to, we used to go to the buildings, right? So the buildings were funny because in the buildings in New York, this is in Queens, okay? So this is Jackson Heights, Queens that we worked. We did some Left Rock City uh corona stuff like that but mostly jackson heights elmhurst that whole area astoria and i remember you when you got to the building you know you looked on the directory you found the apartment you rang it and a lot of times there's an intercom they'll be like who you tell them who you are and they'll say okay hold one second you have and you hit the door and you get it okay so that was typical i grew up like that so like when i was hanging out in buildings when I just wanted to get into a building, sometimes I still be like 30, 30 um, buttons. Actually, there was more than 30 buttons, probably like 60 buttons. And I would just press them all, and eventually someone would just buzz you in without asking who. Very typical, you know? Most of the people would ask you who before letting you in, but you always got those few that would just buzz you in because they either waiting for somebody or, you know? But anyway, so, well, so crazy, right? So when we used to have to return, and this happened so many times, like clockwork. And the only times I remember it happening was when I had to carry the TV. Now, the TV was a lot harder to carry than the AC. 
was the AC, you grab the side of the compressor, and a lot of times with the AC, he would give us a dolly. The, um, the TV couldn't really use a dolly for it. He wanted you to carry that. So I remember coming into the, uh, the building, okay, the lobby of the building, and we're in the little area where you hit for the intercom, and I'm holding this thing. Now, I don't want to tell him because he kept, you okay, you good, you got it? Yeah, 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 I got it. You know, you want to be macho. You want to show him that you can handle it. So I, re- I worked with him for a couple of years. And I remember standing there, man, my hands shaking. And he rings the bell. He finally finds it. And he got glasses on. And they're, they're thick-ass glasses. So it takes him a while to find the apartment. He's looking at the paper, looking at the apartment. Look at Finally, he finds it. And he rings it. And I'm waiting for these people to ring us in. And they're not. And my hands are shaking. I swear I feel like I'm going to drop this damn thing. So I kind of, you know, I use my knee, kind of pick it up. I might lean it. So usually in the hallways, there's like this little little ledge that goes, a little marble ledge goes around the hallway wall. Sometimes I can put a piece of it on there and kind of balance it. He'll be cool with that, you know, because they'll tell you, hey, lean in here and just hold it. Because he knows it's getting heavy. That's why he has us, right? So then finally they come on and it's, you can hear you can hear it's an old Jewish lady because that's 90% of his customers were older Jewish people, people that were like his age. You know, a lot of them came in, they still had the numbers on their wrists from the concentration camps. These people came into the United States years ago and um, they were very about themselves. You know, they they purchased stuff from other Jewish people, the business, you know, they dealt with in the business, the Jewish community. So then all of a sudden, all right, you hear the, the lady comes on, who is it? And he would go and he would say, it's Gershon Steinbach. I'm here with your TV. So then all of a sudden it's silent. So I'm like, okay, come on lady, let us in, let us in, this shit is heavy. And he's already, he's a curse. God, this son of a bitch, dumb bitch. <laughs> and he would go and ring the bell again. <laughs> so it takes a while because he must be going back to the other side of the room, coming back. She'll come on again. Who is it? And he'll get closer. It's Gershon Steinbach. I'm here with your TV. Let me in. Still nothing. I can't believe this. I'm like, what the? What the hell's going on? I'm in my arms. I'm gonna drop this damn TV. I can feel it. I'm gonna drop this TV, you know? And he's already cursing. He's already pissed off, you know? He starts to, you know, starts to mumble to himself, you know? He's, he's, he's pacing. He's getting really, really freaking annoyed at this point. Finally, he rings the bell. Now, he's ringing this thing hard. Like, like he's, like, like, he's ringing it like it's gonna ring louder in her apartment. It's not. It's gonna be the same tone, but he's ringing it. Nah, 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 nah. Finally, he goes, Who is it? He goes, Ma'am, it is Gershon Steinbach. Gershon Steinbach. I'm here with your television set. It's got Yo, finally. Okay, come up. Beam. He'll hit the door and he's cursing his. Fucking bitches. Oh, yo, he was bad. <laughs> so now I'm walking. Now we have to go. I'm like, what floor? He goes, yeah, 11th floor. No, nah, I don't think they went up. Let me see. Nah, those buildings didn't go up that high. So those buildings, the max they went up to was six, maybe seven stories. So, you know, it might be, of course, might be on the last floor. You know, so we get in the elevator and we go up there. And then finally, we're going we're gonna to walk in. Sometimes these people want us to take our shoes off. It's like, yo, man, I'm carrying this thing. I can't, you know, he doesn't want me to put it down on the rug because they usually these apartments are beautiful. Like, and he'll tell me, don't touch anything. Don't look around. Like, <laughs> like, you know, the people would not, they would not be happy with me being in there, you know? And, um, and back then I looked a little thuggish. I had that, I had that, that eye, you know? So, and they, they were uncomfortable. And then finally we would go and he will plug in the TV and it will be working, okay? But there was a sudden, but I gotta tell you the sudden one because this is hilarious, okay? All right, so we go, same building, same neighborhood, but this is a black family. 
And you can tell that they're really pretty much an uppity black family. They look like the Huxables. Matter of fact, they look more prudish than the Huxables. Like it was the husband. Like these are people that in their apartment, they're going to dress up and wear suits to sit down to eat dinner. And it was like, it was like the, the daughter, the husband, their par- the daughter's parents, and then like maybe the husband's mother. So it was like all these people and they're all dressed up nice. Now, we go... Okay, now these people had a problem back then. If your TV was messed up, sometimes you had a problem with the color, so he had to go and do stuff with the thing because you only see the, the, the picture in black and white. So they would come and there would be a problem with the color, and he could do stuff and he knows what to do. And he'll keep messing with it until all of a sudden the color pops in. So you'll be watching the show while we're testing it, and all of a sudden the color will pop in and he's holding it. And you'll see the people get all excited oh, yeah, there it is! and he would fix it. So this time. So we go up there and we have to go check the TV. Like most of the time he's gonna fix it on the spot. It's only when he needs to replace a piece that he will bring it in. So now you have the entire family. And I remember them sitting on, do you remember those real fancy couches that like the frame of it around the top was like really like designers, like waves. And it was like a white wood with the white, you know, all very old fashioned, but everything in here was immaculate. And you could tell that these people, I don't know what they did for a living, but they were pretty well off. They had these condos. They were just from New York and the Queens is not a cheap place to live. And I remember they're all sitting there and not talking. They're not offering us a drink. They're not doing nothing. They're all sitting there and freaking Gerson, right? So, and it's one of these units that are almost like a piece of furniture. So it looks like a like a dresser. So we have to get on our knees. And these are the ones that have the stereo on the type, two speakers on the side, and then the TV is like, so it's within like a case. So it looks like a like a dresser, you know, with a TV in the front, huge, right? So he goes, I remember it's about seven o'clock PM and he's going through the channels, all right? And I'm noticing, he's noticing all the channels are black and white, okay? All of a sudden, I remember he gets to Sanford and Son, okay? And he, when he gets to Sanford and Son, he looks over at them, he goes, hey, what are you guys talking about? It's colored? Oh my God, oh my God. They looked at each other, I put my head down. He saw that it wasn't a good joke, especially not with those people, <laughs> you know? And he totally, <laughs> He left the subject alone. I'm like, oh my God, no, he didn't. He he didn't tell them that the show was colored. (laughs) But but anyway, yeah. So I don't know what happened to Gerson. You know, I hope he's still around. Uh, I would love to know whatever happened to him. He was kind of old back then. So I don't know. I don't know. So anyway, guys, listen, that was my story for today. I guess it beats uh, talking about the coronavirus, uh, though it's still happening. Uh, hoping uh, you guys are staying safe, stay indoors. Don't go out if you don't have to go out. Be very careful. Let's go through this. Let's get through this, okay? So um, I'm, I'm really, really itching for everything to get back to normal soon, okay? So we can get our lives back on track. So so anyway, listen, again, this is uh, episode 89. Uh, I appreciate you guys. Everyone who's listening, please continue to tune in as we, you know, and you guys are getting to know me a little bit better, and hopefully I can get to know a lot of you. Uh, A lot of you guys are sending me messages. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Just keep them coming and just hang in there with me uh, until we get over this thing, all right? So, all right, guys, listen, until tomorrow, be cool, and good night, Freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.